Hi, my name is Sheryl Drury and I'm a Senior Business Consultant for Professional Advantage. And today I'm going to introduce you to Dynamics AX 2012 Trade Agreements. Today I'd like to show you how you can improve productivity by using dual units of measure enabled for both sales and purchase agreements and delivery schedules and purchase order management. When I'm talking about sales and purchase agreements in Dynamics AX 2012, I'll be showing you how you can set up both value-based and quantity-based agreements, how you can create an order directly from the actual sales agreement, how you can apply terms and conditions to the agreement, when you actually complete the agreement, how it transfers to an actual sales order. There are also controls in place that when you create order lines indirectly that it searches to see whether an agreement is in place and also how the defined periods for an agreement work for both purchase orders and sales orders and also show you how you can actually place an agreement on hold. So for the first demo I'd like to take you through the creation of the sales agreement with catch weight items and how I'll create an actual sales order and managing that sales order and then I can show you again the same thing within the purchase order management area. We'll go into AX now. Okay so this is Dynamics AX 2012. I'm just going to go into my sales and marketing area and you'll find sales agreements underneath the common forms under sales orders. Within purchasing you'll find it under the procurement and sourcing under my purchase orders area and you'll find purchase orders agreements. So first of all I'll set one up in my sales and marketing. So I'm going to create a new sales agreement. Select a customer. You can select different currencies. Now sales agreement classification I'm going to select a blanket sales agreement and here you can see the commitment types being either product quantity commitment or it can be a product value commitment or by category or by value commitment. I'm going to actually choose my product quantity commitment today. See also the status is on hold at this point because I have not confirmed or updated this agreement. I'm going to go into my lines, I'm going to add a line. I'm going to add an item which has catch weight management switched on. So as you can see this particular product line comes in 10 kilo units. I'm just going to add a, an expiry date onto my sales agreement. I've chosen a chicken product. There's two units of measure. There's an inventory unit of measure and a catch weight unit of measure. The editable field is the catch weight unit of measure. At the moment one box equals 10 kilos. So I'm going to put mine in for 100 boxes so that will change that to 1000 kilos is my agreement of my total quantity. I've got an expiry date here I've entered in of the 26th of the 8th 2012 as well. So once I'm happy with this agreement I can then go in and confirm it from here or I can go back to the header page and confirm it from here. Now I'm going to mark this as effective and that will actually take it off being on hold and make it an active sales agreement. And as you can see my status has now changed from being on hold to effective. Next step I'm actually going to create a release order. Now this will allow me to create a sales order directly from the agreement. I've clicked on release. I have my address in there for the customer. I have no delivery date controls on here at this stage. I can select a site and I'm going to select to deliver 40 of the 100 boxes in the agreement. I can select a date for delivery being the 29th of the month. And at this point I can then say create and this has now created my sales order for me automatically. So if I close this now and go back to my all sales orders you'll see that a new sales order has been created so I have my header and my lines and my line details below and these additional tabs if you'd like to add additional information or not. Now I just wanted to show you one other thing within the agreement so I'm just going to go back to my sales agreement for one moment and double click on my sales agreement. If you have a look at this sales agreement on the price and discount tab there is an option here to exclude from rebate. What this gives us is the option to be able to exclude this agreement from any customer rebates that may be set up. This may be due to the fact there's already a discount given to the customer in our pricing mechanism. Also under the fulfillment tab you can see that it shows both in the inventory unit of measure and the catch weight unit of measure both what's remaining to be fulfilled, what's been released for example our sales order of 40 boxes, what's been delivered and what's been invoiced on that agreement so far and it shows that the actual catch weight is 100 10 kilo boxes. So just a couple of things I want to show you within the agreements. Next I'm going to show you delivery schedules which are basically related to an actual order line which allows the system to plan multiple deliveries 
for a single line. So we can go in onto that single line and dictate to the system when we would actually like delivery. Quantities of the order line and the sum of the quantity on the delivery lines will always be in sync. Now this is allowed on the sales quotation form, sales order and the purchase order form. So I'm now going to go in and show you the delivery schedule side. I'm going to go back to my sales order again. I'm going to go into edit mode and look at my line level of my sales order and I'm going to click on the sales order lines and delivery schedules. At the moment it defaults to the 40 catch weight quantity. I'm going to change it to 25 and I'm going to create another line for 15. I'm also going to create a different delivery date for that 15 of September the 12th and say OK. That's now created me the additional delivery lines in there my original order line of 40 and my two new delivery schedules of 25 and 15 for that particular order. Now as for the processing of the order this is done the same way as a normal sales order whereby you can confirm it, you can pick and pack it and you can then invoice to the customer. For this final part of the demonstration I just want to take you through the purchase agreement side. So we're going to go into procurement and sourcing and into purchase agreements. So first of all I'll click on the icon for new purchase agreement, select my vendor. As per the sales agreements you can select your currency you'd like to use. It's on hold at the moment. I'm going to select a blanket purchase agreement and I'm going to do it again on the product quantity commitment. I'm going to put in a, an effective from date and to date and select my lines. Okay, add a new line, select an item. As you can see the item I've chosen here is 0.2 of a kilo for every one each of my catch weight and I'm going to create an agreement for 1000 eaches which will become 200 kilos. So once I'm happy with this I can go in and confirm it, make it effective so it makes it an active sales agreement and if I'd like to create my first release order from here I can do so as per my sales agreements and click on the release order. Now as you can see it's got here my items come through. I'm going to select a quantity of 50 each which equals 10 kilos as my first release. Put in my site and create. As you can see this has now created a purchase order number 35. If I close this and now go back into and have a look at all my purchase orders you can see here purchase order number 35 it's at the approved stage and it's an open order for 50 each or 10 kilos of the chicken pillet. I'm just going to open this purchase order and I'm just going to show you how you can also do the delivery schedule for a purchase order as you did with the sales order. It's under my purchase order lines, delivery schedule, and I'm actually going to do five lots of 10 each with a delivery date of one per month, so one from the 8th through to, the, through to December. Click OK. As you can see it's transferred back to the purchase order with a delivery of two kilos or 10 each per month with a total amount on the order of 10 kilos. Now that's all I was going to show you in the purchase order management side. To actually process the order it is the same as per standard order. You go in and do a confirmation to the vendor and then do your receiving and your invoicing as per standard. If you have any further questions on this area please do not hesitate to contact someone within Professional Advantage. Thank you for your time.